First off, I want to thank the uh, brave men and women who work behind the wall. I want to thank them on a national level because their job goes on How do they try to turn a guard? Well, President, uh, correctional officer, sorry, I apologize. Uh, but correctional officer. Uh... How you guys doing today? It's Anthony Gange, your host of Tear Talk. Great question sent through my email. Question is, Gange, if an inmate is utilizing self-harm to manipulate staff, is there anything that you can do? And I've touched on this topic before. I actually titled it the uh, inmate that cries wolf. Because in our story, we have to respond each and every time that they cry wolf. But there's some parts I feel I can add to, and that's what I'm going to do with today's discussion. So guys, again, the topic is going to be our need to respond when an inmate claims they're going to self-harm. Now guys, if you haven't, the show Tear Talk is for you brave men and women that work in correction. So please subscribe, interact, engage, comment, hit that bell. That bell is going to notify you every time I post up a video. I stand by for our sponsor. I wanted to attend a university that had an intelligence program. I wanted to look at problems different. I wanted to increase my critical thinking abilities. AMU offered those avenues to expand. Obtaining your degree as an adult, you're actually paying yourself and investing in yourself. You can't put a dollar on it, it's priceless. It's something that can never be taken away from you. American Military University, learn from the leader. Thank you guys for listening to my sponsor. We have covered this topic before, the inmate that cries wolf. I think that's the name of the episode. And it's because no matter how many times an inmate cries wolf, we have to respond. We have to respond. And an inmate knows that. An inmate knows that if I say A, staff has got to do B. Right? If I do this, staff has got to do that. That's why we can do all these videos on inmate manipulation, but policies are in place that inmates know and can utilize against us. That's why we have to be controlled in how we respond. Yeah, you know we're going to respond. You know we're going to do this, but this is how we're going to do it. And that may be where we can be a little bit unpredictable. And it's where we're trying to be unpredictable in the confines of predictability. Unpredictable in the confines of predictability. But it's the truth. And it's how we respond. It's how we maneuver that can be a little bit unpredictable, but again, still going to get the job done. An inmate may have many reasons why they're going to fake self-harm or fake to take their own lives. Again, just to manipulate that, that move if you're in a prison, maybe you're in a jail. They want to manipulate to another housing unit. They don't want to go to the one that they're in. They want to plainly set up staff so they know staff may open up that door. Hopefully no one does it foolish. They always open up that door with backup. But if someone opens up the doors, the inmate sets the officer up or the staff member up. Another reason could be just plain and simple that Maybe the inmate's out of jail and he's looking for that insane plea before the court case settles. Maybe they're in a prison and they're going back to a court case. Who knows? But they could be looking for that insane plea, that insanity plea. But either way, there's many reasons why an inmate would use self-harm or I'm going to kill myself to manipulate staff. And again, it's very hard for us to catch a real attempt. Trust me, especially if the inmate didn't make it known and the person's not on a constant watch. It's very hard. Sometimes we catch it because maybe we just have this feeling in our gut that comes from experience, or we happen to just go back and do a sporadic tour, and we happen to walk in on it. But most likely, an inmate that wants to take their own lives is they're going to know when and how to do it because they know us. It just, it just is what it is. But again, we have to respond as if every attempt is real. The public's not going to care about the 99 times out of 100 that we prevented this person from taking their own lives. They're not gonna care that 99 times out of 100, we could prove that the inmate faked these attempts. All they care about is the last one that we did not catch. Remember that. All they care about is the last one that we did not catch. That's all they care about. And mind you, if an inmate uses this to get attention, uses I'm gonna harm, harm myself or I'm gonna kill myself to get attention, and we decide to ignore it, you know what they do? They step it up. They step it up. Now it becomes serious because now when they make an effort to step it up, they're expecting us to respond. And if we don't respond, they're out. How crazy is that? All for that attention. They are going to step it up and now it's critical. Now it's real. And now if we don't respond, we're going to be held responsible for that life that is lost. Remember that. As always, guys, the show is Tear Talk. I thought it was a great topic. Thank you for sending it. Please, guys, if you want, 
Send me some emails, guys. I'm, I'm always willing to take on new topics. My email is gangianthony at yahoo.com, G A N G I, Anthony, A N T H O N Y, at yahoo.com. And guys, this Friday I leave for Oklahoma. Got to go out early in the morning, so I'm going to vlog the trip a little bit, give you some highlights. Hopefully, you guys will enjoy what I put together. Going to do a little tear talk vlog of my trip to Oklahoma, including my many stops along the way. Um, all right, guys, as always, guys, the show is tear talk. Please stay safe.